Hello and welcome to the Full Octane Garage. And today's discussion is going to be power steering pump control valves, actually the flow control valves more specifically. Hello and welcome to the Full Octane Garage and today's discussion is going to be power steering pump control valves, actually the flow control valves more specifically. Inside the power steering pump there is an additional valve that controls the pressure and it controls the pressure by a, a series of washers uh, that you put on the small valve inside that is uh, pushed up by a spring. This discussion isn't really about that, but in another video you could probably find something out there that shows how you would increase or decrease the actual pressure your pump puts out. Some power steering racks require much less pressure. Flaming River is an example. They only require about 400 pounds of pressure, and if you overpressurize them, you're going to blow the seals out. So. There's a series of additional washers that you would put in that valve that's inside your power steering pump once you take the flow control valve out. Sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, but it's not. It really isn't. So, the power steering control valve on a Mustang 2 rack, as an example, would take about 2 gallons per minute. And that's a very small hole in the power steering control valve, actually your flow valve. I have tried a couple of times to drill out the hole a little bit bigger. It does get better on this particular truck. This is a 1957 GMC truck, but I have a 1988 close ratio Corvette power steering rack in it, running it off of a Type 2 GM pump. And this whole discussion is going to be around the Type 2 GM pump with a remote reservoir. My remote reservoir requires a minus 6 um, hose end on it and then it goes into the power steering pump. What I have right now is what I believe to be a two gallon per minute flow valve and it has got an adapter to get it to a minus six. What I did was I wanted to get the biggest valve I could. This one uh, is actually uh, an SF23. They claim that this is a four and a half uh, gallon per minute flow valve, which is what I think I'm going to need on this close ratio power steering rack off of a C4 Corvette with a Z51 package. First we're going to drain the power steering reservoir, we're going to suck all the fluid out, we're going to take off the old flow control valve, we're going to put this one in its place and hope this fixes our problem. Let's get right to it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the high pressure line from the power steering pump. And this is a GM style type 2 power steering pump. We're going to take the flow control valve out. And we are going to leave the pressure control valve, which is inside the pump. We're not going to pull it out. We're going to swap it back out, put this new one in, put this uh, line back on and refill it. Uh, turn the, once we start the truck, we'll turn the power steering back and forth several times to bleed any air out of it, and it should be back to normal. All right, we've completed the install. We did an initial fire up on the engine. We checked for leaks. Uh, we turned it in here while it was cold, and it appeared to be good. And since it's raining outside, we're going to have to test this another day. But from all indications, this has been a success. We have uh, a greater amount of flow pushing the power steering so the wheel is easier to turn. And that's really what we were going after. Also at a dead stop, it feels like we have power steering now, which before it did not. So thanks for being with us at the Full Octane Garage. Don't forget to like, subscribe to our videos. Don't forget to check out a couple of our sister channels like Driving with Melissa and also our uh, sister company, Full Octane Insurance, for all of your collector or insurance needs.